that this group, which you took pains to gather here this afternoon, belongs to what I would call the second generation of Filipino philosophers. The reason being that, perhaps with the exception of Dr. Mani D of the Ateneo de Manila, all of us here, <laughs> all of us here were once students, and students in the same classes of the late Dr. Emerita Esquito of the University of Santo Tomas, mentioned to us um, by, uh, by uh, Jason. Jason, thank you very much for the invitation. Also to the philosophy, associate us with philosophy, and please, uh, you have our support here. Well, if that's the case, then the generation of Quito should be the first generation of Filipino philosophers, which also include, among others, the revered professor Father Roque Ferriols, SJ, is still a living legend, and the late Dr. Ramon Reyes. Both of them are from the Ateneo. The first generation of Filipino philosophers are not necessarily the first philosophers in the Philippines. They themselves were a product of teachers of philosophy, which one can imagine was uniformly, at the time, scholastic and Thomistic. Perhaps with the exception of, uh, of UP, which was already doing something in the line of, uh, of analytic philosophy. No one of them were, in a true sense, Filipino philosophers, this first Filipinos, uh, so-called. But Dr. Quito and her generation were all fresh from your group, and so were sporting European thinking, but at the same time, they were already imbued with the Filipino spirit. And so it is this generation of Dr. Quito, which I would consider as the first generation of Filipino philosophers, uh, underlying Filipino. So I am not concerned with the first Filipino philosopher who perhaps is unknown and unknowable. I'm merely concerned with something like the Filipino Socrates or the Filipino Confucius. Everyone knows there were pre-Socratics before Socrates, and Confucius himself remarked that he was merely being a teacher, a transmitter of knowledge. I shall pick out my choice of the Filipino Socrates or the Filipino Confucius from among the first generation of Filipino philosophers. And despite my highest regard for all of them, my choice goes to my own teacher, and that is Emerita Esquito. The reason is because while Ferriols and Reyes among others, kept themselves within the scope of phenomenology and existentialism, Quito expanded her philosophy beyond them. Almost every semester, we were treated by Quito to a new philosophy. It was from her that we heard of structuralism, hermeneutics, Renaissance philosophy, Plato, Plotinus, Karl Marx, semiotics, um, Herbert Marcuse, Ludwig Wittgenstein, and even of Indian and Chinese philosophies, as well as comparative philosophy. It was also she who, despite her being a companion, wrote the first books of philosophy in Tagalog. Of course, the one whom you should always remember as a philosopher writing in Tagalog should be Father Ferriols. Uh, his pambungas had to be uh, in everybody's library. But the first, I think I stand, uh, I don't know if I, anybody can correct me here, but the first Filipino philosopher to write ever in Tecano, I think, is uh, Emerita Esquito, despite her companion. So her Tecano is companion. No? One of her books, incidentally, I co wrote with her, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, it was also she who. Um, who, uh, um, who was the first to speak about the Filipino folks guys. And so it was also from her that, for example, your father Leonardo Mercado was able to get the inspiration to do what he later call, called uh, the elements of Filipino philosophy. I think, in fact, that we miss uh, Father Mercado here. Uh, if uh, anybody's interested in Filipino philosophy, the first man to come to mind should be uh, Mercado because uh, he wrote the book 
entitled, it's very smart writing, entitled in his book, uh, The Elements, Elements of Filipino Philosophy. But it is Dr. Kito who first uh, discussed, you know, matters of false guys in her classes. And we were together, classmates, uh, uh, Father Mercado and myself, sitting there under Dr. Kito. So you can see that the scope of uh, Kito's philosophy is boundless. And that's why we ourselves here, including the ones who are present before you, we all belong to different philosophical persuasions. Professor Abed with Bayo is a consistent Marxist, I think, and you're consistent, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can come in the door. But how I did. <laughs> we were very good friends. We miss each other. Then um, Dr. Tim Dress as a philanthropist. Uh, I think that's the most uh, serious thing about uh, he's a Filipinist. He would like to uh, to do um, uh, philosophy in Tagalog, making the language intellectual, the intellectualization of the Filipino language, especially as applied to philosophy. Then, of course, uh, Dr. Mali D should be remembered for his contributions to both Chinese philosophy and the philosophy of Gabriel Marcel. Okay. If you do Gabriel Marcel, he is the expert uh, here. Dr. Ko, who is still coming over, is uh, of course uh, very well known when it comes to Chinese philosophy, and um, and he has a seven-volume uh, fast rift, and I think for that nobody will possibly will, will possibly ignore his contribution to Filipino philosophy. He is the icon of both Chinese and comparative philosophies. And of course, I, I do uh, something on Kant and postmodernism. When I now look at the younger generations, I see Filipino philosophers in the making, and they, like us, are of varied persuasions. Your school, PUP, has been the house of my good friend, Abed Riveo, who was definitely a strong influence on the development of Filipino philosophy here. At the same time, many of you have to do further studies in UST and even in our SBD seminary, the Christ the King Mission Seminary. That's where I am from. So, I have vows of poverty, chastity, and teachers. SBD po ako. I have to do among others, Christ the King Seminary. The, the advantage of being of my age is I cannot, I don't want to be tied anymore to only one institution. So I, I am teaching in the seminary. I'm also teaching uh, in UST. I cannot possibly not teach in UST. UST is my home base. I am a Tomasian at heart also. And then I'm teaching also at the Real School of Theology in their philosophy department. And of course, uh, I'm teaching also in Tagaytay which is our uh, school, it's a theologate, but uh, they found a means to invite me to teach there. I'm doing cut and runner with, with them in Tagaytay. Uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm handling a course like that, runner and cut, and I was doing it happily. And um, it's, it's, I know, it's almost already time next week. So, um, at the same time, many of you have to do further studies in UST and so you, and also at the Christ the King Seminary, and so you cannot help getting other shades of philosophy. At UST, the, the chair himself is coming from Nietzsche and critical theory, Dr. Bolanius. He, he, he does not belong to this group. <laughs> he is much younger and he's doing critical theory and uh, his, um, his master's uh, uh, thesis is on, uh, on on Nietzsche. So the combination of Nietzsche and uh, critical theory, Adorno or Heimer, that, that kind of thing. And when you do critical theory, you should have Marx in the back of your mind. And so in the seminary, I invited him to do Marx. He's doing Marx this time with us. Um, UST is keeping itself strong likewise, likewise, despite itself in the phenomenological and existential traditions. 
The Filipino philosophy of Father Junardo Mercado has been influenced by a class which we took up at UST, also handled by Quito, then enriched by a course on cultural anthropology of an Indian professor. This was also very much like the Filipino psychology of the day, Dr. Virgilio Enriquez of UP. UP used to be the bulwark of logic and linguistic analysis, but it seems to me my impression could be wrong. Uh, but it seems to me that now uh, when you talk of uh, logic and linguistic analysis uh, of this discipline, you can also count on the Asal University, am I right? Certainly, certainly. Um, yet, uh, all of this is close, so you see how varied the, 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 the philosophic philosophies in the Philippines are, um, yet all of this is close and the uh, and universities could not help but welcome the other varieties of philosophy. This is an open attitude, which I think we should attribute first and foremost to Emerita S. Quito. And so Quito is my candidate for the Filipino Socrates or the Filipino Confucius. None of us here can claim that, and much less can we claim to be the first Filipino philosopher who I earlier said is unknown and unknowable. And all we in the second generation of Filipino philosophers can hope to accomplish is leave a legacy of living philosophy which you, the younger ones, can build upon. And that's why all of us here continue to read, continue to study, continue to write. All of these are writers. We are all contributing to to, to journals and uh, even writing books. So um, it's only by writing that we will be able to, to, uh, to sustain the uh, legacy which we call Filipino philosophy. So only by committing our thoughts on paper can we secure this legacy, this legacy, which we call Filipino philosophy. Thank you very much.